Our next presenter is um, Joanne Van Der Zalm, who uh, works, as Peter said, here uh, as a research scientist, and she's going to be talking about the um, manufacturer recharge options. Thanks, Joanne. Thank you. Uh, this um, Australian Water Recycling Centre of Excellence project is entitled Raising the National Value of Water Recycling by Overcoming Impediments to MAR. Um, I'll be referring to it as the Marrow Project or Managed Aquifer Recharge and Recycling Options. It commenced in January 2012 and will be completed in January 2015. Uh, just as a brief um, uh, background, we, despite the benefits of MAR, we know that um, the full potential of the technology hasn't been realised. The MARO project aims to address some of the major knowledge gaps associated with recycled water managed aquifer recharge and therefore facilitate uptake of the technique. Um, these knowledge gaps are soil and aquifer clogging when we use a nu nutrient rich source water. Uh, water quality impacts, in particular the fate of nitrogen uh, in the receiving groundwater system and economic uh, compa comparisons. We're utilising uh, two novel applications of recycled water managed aquifer recharge. The first of these is um, soil aquifer treatment in Alice Springs. Um, soil aquifer treatment uses infiltration basins that are operated intermittently to give wet and dry cycles which allows development of variable redox conditions to um, aid passive treatment. Also allows um, drying out of the surface clogging layer and, and cracking so it's a, a management of uh, clogging processes. It was conceived to manage sewage overflows and sustain groundwater resources and originally operated uh, with a recharge area of um, around 10,000 square metres. The current configuration is an expanded system, five basins with a recharge area of um, 38,000 square metres and the configuration shown to the bottom um, left with the locations of some of our sort of soil sampling that's been undertaken. The basins have been operated differently. Um, the inflow to the basins is shown to the right. The dark blue and green trace um, are basins A and C, which have had the most water applied. The um, sort of purple and light blue to the right are the newer basins, D and E. Um, and the red basin, which has had a uh, little uh, red trace, is basin B, had little inflow because it was um, uh, affected by surface compaction during construction, um, but has since been remediated. The orange trace to the start is actually one of the old basins. So basin five was the original configuration, but was then expanded in 2012 to become um, the new basin D. And to the bottom right, we just see um, the, a bare surface, um, basin E, after its first fill, and then the dense vegetation that develops within the basins. The second um, uh, demonstration site that we're using is um, in buried infiltration galleries at Floriot. Um, this technique um, uh, offers, um, it's a closed system, so it's a, a suitable technique for urban systems where we can't have a large infiltration basin. Um, also prevents, um, without exposure to sunlight, there aren't algal growth problems. But also being closed, um, managing cl clogging can be more of a challenge. We can't scrape the surface easily, so we need to understand the treatment required to manage clogging in these systems. Um, infiltration galleries were previously trialled at Floriet from 2005 to 2010 and were successful in infiltrating um, secondary treated wastewater at about uh, one metre per day. This um, current investigation uses a newly established gallery to test out the feasibility of high infiltration rates between three and five metres per day. A target um, suspended solids um, level of less than five milligrams per litre was established to prevent physical clogging of the galleries. Uh, this was established um, with laboratory column studies at the start of the project. Um, and um, 
and groundwater chemistry is also being monitored adjacent to the galleries or upstream and downstream to assess water quality impacts. The results that I'll be covering uh, today focus on the water quality and clogging aspects. We're in the preliminary stages of the economic assessment and that will be uh, ramping up in the next um, months. The performance of the infiltration or sap basins at Alice Springs has been um, extremely variable. We've had infiltration rates from around 50 millimetres today to over 500. Um, and we can see that on this trace, the green trace represents infiltration in Basin A, the one that's had the most water applied. Um, ignoring the spikes, there's a, there's a general um, decline in infiltration rate. Uh, also shown in red are the wetting times, which are maintained, um, well, on average around three days for mosquito control. Uh, and in the blue diamonds are drying times. Um, the variable infiltration is influenced by um, heterogeneity in the sediments beneath the basins, in particular, you know, the presence of low, um, fine-grained, low permeability sediments in the top one metre. But we also can see that it's influenced by operation of the basins, and the drying interval um, has impacted on infiltration rate. The very um, la latest information here is on the most recent winter, where infiltration in Basin A dropped to below 100 millimetres um, per day, and that was um, coincident with drying times uh, much shorter at around two days. So we can, we can make recommendations to improve performance based on the operational practices. Chemistry of the soil profile has um, revealed um, inorganic and organic carbon and um, total nitrogen accumulation on the surface, which is consistent with a clogging layer, and um, uh, scanning electron microscopy has confirmed the presence of inorganics and organics within um, samples of the Schmutzdecker, and we've sort of got that shown here. Toward the um, inflow points of the basins, there is an accumulation of algae from the source water. Uh, also ongoing within this project is an assessment of the liability of the source water organic carbon um, to determine whether this is limiting the potential for denitrification within this system. So we've undertaken some measurements of biodegradable dissolved organic carbon um, up to 4.8 milligrams per litre and representing about 50% of the dissolved organic carbon going into the system. Uh, operation of the Floriate Infiltration Gallery commenced in October um, and was initially plagued by um, inconsistent or intermittent inflow caused by mechanical problems with the setup and was resolved in the days just prior to Christmas. So looking at the soil moisture under the gallery, we see a lot of intermittent um, information initially, followed by uh, consistent soil moisture content um, as we've maintained fairly um, consistent flow uh, since December. The, the points to note are that um, uh, we've managed to uh, achieve an infiltration rate of four metres per day, which is the, the, within the target range. Um, the soil moisture beneath the gallery um, hasn't declined, and there's been no evidence of water pooling within the gallery itself, so no signs of significant clogging. Um, in the most recent um, operation, there has been an increase in moisture seen here, which are sensors adjacent to the gallery, suggesting that lateral movement of water um, is increasing, which may be induced by a reduction in infiltration below the gallery itself. Um, the geochemistry um, has indicated a wastewater signature downstream of the gallery. Um, we see calcium concentrations declining in the groundwater toward our influence signature with some increases through dissolution of um, calcium carbonate infiltration. The uh, variable phosphorus signature in our wastewater um, is not seen at all in the groundwater due to absorption of um, 
a phos phosphate during infiltration, but we're not seeing any nitrate, um, a significant nitrate removal. We have a number of project partners, um, Power on Water Corp and Water Corporation through operation of our um, field investigations. Uh, but Water Corp and our other partners are also actively involved in providing information for the economic analysis. In the broader sense, um, where we've got two demonstration projects um, of water recycling via MAR that will be of value to future proponents. Uh, the application of the information from the Alice Springs assessment will be used to optimise performance of the basins. Uh, this is the first application of soil aquifer treatment in Australia. Um, it's a successfully used in arid zones of the US, but a um, yeah, novel application here in Australia. Um, some of our lessons from the evaluation to date have been that uh, field-based evaluation is much better suited to a heterogeneous environment such as this. Um, initial column um, attempts to use column studies were unsuccessful. Infiltration rates have been highly variable and it has been influenced by um, uh, insufficient drying time. The evaluation is ongoing. We're using multiple lines of evidence to try and understand this system. Um, chem chemistry and microbiology to understand clogging and water quality. Um, we're use, also applying some geophysics and temperature profiling in addition to water levels and groundwater chemistry to look at the flow of movement under the basins. Um, fluoride infiltration gallery, it's an application of a novel technique which could be suited to urban areas, so uh, for groundwater um, replenishment. Some of our lessons have been uh, operational inf uh, problems have influenced the results. Clogging has not um, significantly impacted infiltration rate to date, despite um, variable total suspended solids in our source water, so we haven't been successful in maintaining um, TSS below five milligrams per litre in this sort of field scale uh, pilot investigation. Soil moisture has indicated lateral split, spread of the source water and again this is ongoing and we'll, we'll end with um, destructive um, sampling to look at the infiltration or clogging zone beneath the gallery. Thank you.